Today we're going to be trying to make cheese. So the theory is fairly simple. We're going to be making an acid set cheese rather than a rennet set cheese just because it's easier and it's the pretty much the simplest form of cheese. So we'll be making something like cottage cheese or paneer and those family of cheeses. So the theory is we get some milk, we warm it up and then we just add an acidic juice to it to make it curdle and then we strain it to reserve the curds. We could use lemon juice for that. We can use vinegar, but I actually want to use something foraged for that. So I'm going to use slow juice. So let's go and get some slows. Okay, now these fruits here are slows. This is a particularly productive bush and it produces these little plums. They're called slows, Prunus spinosa. These are very sour, but for what we're trying to do today, they might just be perfect. So I'm gonna pick a few handfuls of these and we'll see if we can get some sour juice out of them to curdle our cheese. Now, despite looking a lot like blueberries, these are not sweet like blueberries. And I'm not gonna taste one on camera. I've done it before. They are so astringent and sour, they make your whole mouth feel like it's drying up. Most famously used in slow gin, which is a liqueur made from gin flavored with slows, which I've made before. I'll put a link in the video description to a video about that. I think that will probably be plenty. So for pressing the juice from my slows, I'm going to use this little juice press. This is actually a lemon press, but I think it'll do just fine. I actually really like this utensil. So I'm just going to put a bunch of slows in there, enough to fill it completely, I think. And then we're just going to give that a squeeze. put a few more in because the mechanical size of the pips the stones in here is going to be an impediment to actually crushing okay well something's happening certainly I should have that the wrong way around okay let's see if we're getting any juice out not a lot <laughs> and we have got some lumps of pulp in there so I'm just going to strain that again now let's just see oh my goodness it's not so much sour it's that it almost makes your tongue just dry right up I'm just going to try that with a smaller quantity of slows like a single layer of them in the juicer. About that much. Let's see if we get any different results here. Oh, interesting. We did actually get probably as much juice out of just those few as we got from the larger quantity. Well, I'm going to keep going like this anyway, and then we'll see if we need to extract more. Okay, now these fruits haven't been cooked, so I can't put these stones on the compost or they will grow. But I can return them to the field where I found them, and we'll see if we can allow some blackthorn plants to grow in different locations. Okay, so after considerable effort and not a small amount of mess and fuss, that's our slow juice extract. There's probably four or five tablespoons full there, maybe a bit more. We're gonna use this to curdle our milk. Now, if you're gonna try this yourself, just use apple cider vinegar or lemon juice. 
or white vinegar or anything you like to curdle the milk. There's no real need to go out and get slow. This is just me being a bit weird. So I'm going to be using about three litres of milk, just because that's what I happen to have here. So I've got a mixture of whole milk and skimmed milk, in fact, here. So that's about as close to the top as I dare go, really. So now we're going to heat this up. And we're going to gently heat this milk. I don't want to boil it or burn it on the bottom of the pan. So we're going to heat it up until we see small bubbles start to form around the edge and until it's uncomfortably hot to put a finger in. So while that milk is coming up to temperature, I'm going to grind up some caraway seeds. Caraway seeds are a very traditional flavouring for acid set cheeses. So caraway's got a pleasantly aniseedy fennel sort of flavour. So I'm just going to grind up about two teaspoons full of those seeds. Wow, they smell great. And this is entirely optional. You could, or you could flavour it with something else. But this cheese won't have a lot of flavour of its own because it's not going to be aged or anything like that. So also while that milk is coming up to temperature, I've just prepared, well actually I've got what is a pocket handkerchief, a cotton pocket handkerchief, which we're going to use to strain a cheese. Any piece of non-stretchy cloth will do as long as it's got enough of a weave for liquid to pass through. This is a brand new piece of cloth. Just going to make sure it's completely clean and hygienic by dunking it in boiling water. Just literally going to steep that in boiling water just to make sure that any residual detergent or anything like that that's been used in the manufacturing process is washed out. And of course to sterilise it as well. Okay, now I'm not going to be planning to do anything with the whey that's left after we strain the curds, but I'm going to keep it anyway just to experiment a bit with it. So this is my straining setup. Ideally, I'd have had a pot that this fits a bit better in. In fact, I probably should have heated the milk in this one and then strained into the other pan, but never mind. So I'm just going to put that across there and that on top to keep that strainer out there. I'm just going to put my straining cloth across the top of this colander like so and we're going to strain into there. Usually you'd probably want a slightly larger cloth than this. So whilst we're not using Iron Age methods here I do have to thank Caroline of Pario Gallico who led the Iron Age cookery course that I went on a couple of weeks ago where we did this. I have made acid set cheese before but actually we did it over an open fire, well a pit fire inside a roundhouse and it was a lot of fun. Anyway I have to thank Caroline for the method of testing the milk which is the finger which we'll do now but we're just going to go one two three ouch so can't count to three before it hurts so we are up to temperature now and then we're just going to add the slow juice and you can see almost straight away curds forming but there won't be enough there at the start I kind of need to stir it as, as I go because it's actually a really firm set this stuff so I'll stir it in as we go so we can see curds forming and they've actually floated up to the top it's interesting that's not quite what I expected I think actually this, this stuff is so acidic that it's curdling the moment it hits the milk. So I kind of maybe need to dilute that a little bit. Okay, well I've used all of my acid in there and I'm just going to keep on stirring until this curdles. Yes, and here it goes. So it's 
quite peculiar that these curds are floating. I don't know if the slow juice has made that different in some way. But there we go, we've got large amounts of curds forming now. So I don't think I need to add any more acid. And we can see actually what's the, the way is now starting to clarify, which means all of those proteins, all of the curd proteins, are starting to stick together in these clumps. So we're just going to gently stir it, really just to keep on giving the whey a chance to separate out. Now normally if you were making a rennet set cheese, you wouldn't do all of this stirring. You would put the rennet in, you'd give it a stir, and then you'd leave it for the curds to set, and then you'd cut the curds. But with an acid set cheese, it's not like that. And in fact, we're operating at a higher temperature anyway, which is part of the reason that acid set cheeses aren't typically matured, because we have essentially cooked this milk while we've been warming it through. And that means that any bacteria that were in there are likely to be, well, severely reduced in number. And so this cheese will typically not change as it ages, or it won't change for the better anyway. So there we go. I think we're probably done. Now we're gonna take this across the way and strain it. So very carefully now, we're gonna take, I'm not gonna try and tip it all at once because that's a disaster with boiling hot whey. Well, not boiling hot, but hot whey. We're just going to take this mixture and put it into the strainer. Now that might look like we've made a lot, but there's still a lot of whey to come out of that. So we'll just take pairs of corners and just give it a little jiggle like that, just to encourage some of that whey to come out. And then opposite pairs of corners and do the same the other way. Okay, so those are our curds, and I'm just going to leave them to sit and drain a bit more before we do anything else. Okay, and so there it is. That is actually strained a fair old bit there. And what we could do with that is just hang that up by there, and it will continue to drain. And we'd end up with a kind of semi-hard curd cheese. Let's just have a look. That's how that's all the way that's come out as you can see underneath. So the other thing we can do with this though is I'm, we can press it and I'm going to try pressing it but first I want to incorporate those flavors. So I'm going to take the curds and put them in a bowl. Just going to tip those out and you can see that's almost formed a solid cheese already. And there's more whey to come out but don't worry about that. And I'm going to add some of this ground caraway, not too much, just a about a teaspoonful, I think. And about half a teaspoonful of salt. And now I'm just going to break up those curds to mix that in so that it can infuse into the, the cheese as it is pressed. Wow, it smells really good. So I've actually made myself a little cheese press out of a brand new clean plastic tube and some recycled HDPE from an earlier project. So let's just have a little cheese press build montage.
So for this, I'm just going to put that in there like that. The perforated disc on the bottom. I've got my cheesecloth, the same one I used before. I'm just going to poke that in there like that. And then I'm going to fill that up with curds. Now you don't have to have a cheese press. You could just tie the curds up in the cloth, tie it up at the top in a bundle, put tie it up with string or a cable tie or something like that, um, and then place a plate on top of it and weigh it down with books or anything heavy. And that weight will squeeze the bag, and within the constraints of the bag, that will press out more of the whey. But I just thought it'd be fun to make a little cheese press and see if I can actually make a cylindrical cheese. Well, that turned out just about right. I didn't plan any of this. So there we go. And just lift up the sides to allow that to drop down properly into the mould. And then we'll just fold those cloth corners in like that and then put the press on top and then I've got to find a way of pressing that so um, yeah back in a moment okay so to begin with I think we'll just use the weight of this thing on top of there just kind of balance that like that and hopefully that won't fall down Let's move other things out of the way in case it does. Okay, so if I, I've applied enough pressure to this as I can using weights, but I'm going to press it a little further, I think. So, of course, you don't have to do this if you're making this cheese. You could just, as I say, tie up that bag, tie it up tight, put it between two plates and put a weight on it, and the pressure between the two plates will press everything out. But I'm going to put a bit of extra pressure on mine, like this. Now, if you're worried about hygiene, my advice is don't. Don't worry and then it won't be a problem because, you know, it isn't a problem. Or actually because what we're doing here is all on the outside of the press. And so nothing I'm really doing here is in contact with the cheese so this clamp I'm just going to put on here really just to retain that bottom edge there stop that bowing out like it's tending to do there really this is all a bit of a bodge but it seems to be working okay so these clamps are just going to go on the sides and then we can apply pressure with these two Well, who knows if that's working, but we'll see soon enough if something comes out. Okay, it's now the evening. This has been pressing for, I don't know, four or five hours or something like that. I don't think any more is going to come out of it. I do think it would have been better if I'd made more holes all the way up. I just didn't actually expect to produce that much cheese, but I don't think we're going to get any more liquid out of this now with this pressing method. So I'm going to carefully take the dirty bits away here now. Push that out onto a plate. Well, it's shrunk down, so I'm guessing we've succeeded in some manner or other. So let's take a look at our pressed cheese and see what we've actually got here. This cloth is not coming off all that easily. It's interesting because the cheese had formed almost a rind there already but unfortunately this cloth has torn some of it away but there it is it's it's cheese it's a bit tatty looking I imagine if I'd used proper cheese cloth that would have been all right but kind of bouncy soft cheese so we can't mature this so this has to be eaten fresh and it'll have to be eaten over the next couple of days and kept in the fridge if it was pressed harder and for longer, it would be possible to make it into something that would store. There are a few 
matured acid set cheeses. I think there's one in Germany called Handkäse. So anyway, we're going to taste a bit of this now. So there it is. That's what the inside of the cheese looks like. In fact, we're going to have to just pause a moment. Just had to grab some images for the thumbnail. So that's our cheese. Now let's have a look at the texture of it. It is quite soft and sticky in the middle still. But it's definitely cheese. Let's have a taste. Mm, it's kind of sweetish, creamy, tiny little bit salty. The caraway is actually really subtle. Mm, mm, that's tasty. And yeah, for a fresh curd cheese, it's actually got quite a bit of taste. I figure we can't just leave it there. So let's have a bit of this cheese on a cracker with some of Jenny's green tomato chutney 2019. So let's give that a go. Mm. Yeah, that works. So we've got our curd cheese here. And really this is a, a lot like quark, except that I've pressed it to the point that it's a bit firmer than your average quark cheese. So, and you can press this to be as firm or as soft as you like. I quite like it when it's a bit firm like this. I'm just going to break some of that up onto some toast this morning. I actually think this is going to be nice with some of my homemade hedgerow jelly on top. Because this curd cheese, it's not going to have a lot of flavour. It's a creamy sort of flavour, but it's not going to taste cheesy as such. So it kind of looks a bit messy, but it's all about what it tastes like really. Okay, well, uh, breakfast. So let's have a taste of a piece that's got some jam on it. Mm, yeah, that is really good like that. That's kind of like the flavors of cheesecake. So that's how to make and press an acid set soft cheese. I hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Mm -hmm.